Recent field returns of semi-hermetic compressors, O6E and O6D, have shown a type of distress in the running gear that's typical of a lightly loaded compressor with an absence of lubrication. We successfully replicated this failure in the laboratory by running the compressor with the suction service valve closed. In this video, we'll show you the difference between Xerol and 3G oils and their characteristics under this type of operating condition. The problem isn't always a closed suction service valve. It could be a stuck solenoid, a stuck EXV, a liquid line service valve that wasn't opened, or even a pump down cycle such as often used when clearing excess refrigerant out of the compressor. This is the test setup in CC1 where we'll be testing a modified 38AQ. We'll close the hand valve or ball valve in the suction line to create our problem condition. The compressor you see is a 6E275. It's instrumented with an oil pressure differential gauge. It has a window looking into the inlet of the oil pump. It has a suction gauge and a standard crankcase sight glass. This is a cutaway of an 06D oil pump in my hand. In the shots that follow, the pump end cover will be replaced with a plexiglass cover. When you look in here, the hole you'll see is the hole in the metal shield. The oil comes into the pump here. You'll see the Freon outgassing and vapor being created at the inlet to the pump. As the shaft rotates, these little veins sweep the oil into the discharge holes. They can't pump gas. The compressor's running now with Xerol as a lubricant. Oil pressure holding nicely at 20 pounds. The crankcase sight glass with very, very little foam in it. The window over the oil pump is nice and clear. The suction service valve has just been closed, pulling the compressor very rapidly into a vacuum. You can see the oil pressure beginning to decay and a gas pocket is forming above the inlet to the oil pump. Notice the absence of any foam. There are just a few bubbles and those are large. At this point, the oil pump is gas bound and so is not delivering adequate oil pressure to the crankshaft. The compressor can't recover. If it's run for several minutes at this condition and then the suction valve is open, we would be loading a dry bearing surface and would cause a failure. This time we opened it quickly and didn't hurt the compressor. Now we'll close the suction service valve, throttling down to about zero PSI. We'll see a similar phenomenon, but not quite as severe. Again, there's no foam in the crankcase sight class. The oil pump is just starting to bubble and starting to lose its prime. The oil pressure is so low that we would have tripped an oil safety switch if there was one, and we're continuing to feed mostly gas into the oil pump. The compressor's on the edge of a failure condition. It may or may not fail under this circumstance. The pulsations may mean that there's little pulses of oil going down the crankshaft at this time. Suction is zero, not in a hard vacuum. And when the valve is opened, it recovers and stabilizes very rapidly. This is an 06E crankshaft, and this is where the oil pump discharges into the crankshaft. Under conditions of very low oil pressure, like you've seen previously, the oil may not have enough pressure to overcome the four to five pounds of centrifugal force that are generated here at this point. When this happens, you lose lubrication to the rod surfaces in this area and the main bearing surface in here. We're running with mineral oil now. You'll notice a quarter inch of foam in the crankcase sight glass. We're using the same compressor as before and at the same conditions. We're going to close the suction service valve and drop it into a vacuum. Notice it pulled down slower than it did with Xerol. The foam that occurs in the entrance to the oil pump is something that the pump is more capable of handling than the gas bubbles produced by Xerol. The crankcase sight glass is solid foam. 
There's still some oil coming into the inlet, located at about that 10 o'clock position on the oil pump. So there's some flow through the shaft. The oil pressure will pulsate, getting up to that critical four or five pound level for an 06E. It's only a pound or so for a D. At this point, it looks like it's starting to recover. And the oil pressure does indeed build up. But the sump is still almost solid foam, so it'll lose its prime again. Still, there's marginally enough pressure to keep the oil safety switch set, and it won't produce a compressor failure. The compressor is still in a hard vacuum. You can see the change in activity in the sight glass as the pump begins to grab more and more oil. The exact characteristics of what happens is a function of the amount of freon dissolved in the oil prior to initiating the test. The higher the saturation of freon in the oil, the less the oil pressure will drop and the quicker it will recover. Now it's starting to clear itself up. The oil's pulling in faster and faster and improving the oil pressure. It's still in a vacuum and it has fully recovered its oil pressure. The little vortex at the one o'clock position is constant in this condition. We've opened the suction service valve to allow the compressor to recover. And now we're going to reclose it to simulate a partial pull down to approximately zero. Not much is happening and it's a very boring test. It's pulled down. It's not losing its prime. There's quite a difference between these two oils, a difference of which we were not aware when we switched from 3G to Zerol in the mid-1980s. The suction valve has been opened and the compressor has experienced a full recovery. The video has been made because we didn't think the words or test data could describe the full impact of this unexpected phenomenon.